So now we've uh, done vertical lines and horizontal lines. So we just did them a la carte. So now we have some three-dimensional shapes. Let's apply the, those theories to these shapes. We have a one-point perspective box and a two-point perspective box. And all these boxes are is a set of vertical and horizontal lines. So I just take them one line at a time. Just put blinders on and it's a lot of lines going on here and they can get confusing when you're trying to like look at everything all at once. And so you just take everything else off the table. You just do one line and then you move on to the next line. And so let's do the, the two point perspective box first. So this is a vertical line. It's like, think of it like flagpole. So the shadow of the vertical lines. So we'll back up a little bit and say, let's make the sun uh, to the left of the viewer. I think they've all been to the left of the viewer so far. We'll have to do some things to the, where the sun's on the right side. So, so these, okay, so the uh, parallel light, it might not be the best aesthetic choice you know, for, to, for shadows because the shadows go straight to the left or right, kind of boring. But this, these videos aren't about aesthetic choices. This is about perspective. And the sun can be directly to your left or right, like 90 degrees from where you're looking. That is a thing. The sun can be there. And if it's there, you get these kinds of shadows. So I'm not saying this is a good choice to make or a bad choice to make, but just this is the, the science behind how shadows work. So maybe we could talk a little bit about why it might not be the best choice for artwork. So here's a vertical line and there's your ground line and we'll make this, uh, we'll make long shadows. So we'll do a 30 degree angle. So here's the light angle comes from the top of the pole, the flagpole and the ground line comes from the bottom of the flagpole and there that dot is the shadow of that dot. And then you just work your way around the corner. So this is the ground line I'll keep in blue. And then the next line is this one. This horizontal line goes to this right vanishing point. So the shadow of that goes to the right vanishing point. Now I could draw a ground line from the bottom of this and go straight across or do a light angle from the top of that corner and go down to intersect this green line. You could do either. You could do both if you really wanted to, but only one of them is necessary. I think I'm going to do a ground line. Okay, so there. So this is the shadow of this surface. But you're not done because around the corner is this wall that you don't see. But you're going to see the shadow of that wall. So we've done that corner. Let's see, let's, if we put this one, we'll just label this. I'll make that A and that A. So that's the shadow of this. And so this line, this horizontal line goes to the left vanishing point. So that means the shadow from here, it also goes to left vanishing point. And I guess the only question here is, there's the shadow. So you don't need this line in there. I mean, that's inside the shadow. So of course that's not going to show up, but it helps me build the shadow. So that, the question is whether this corner, does that corner show up here or is it behind the corner or is it around the corner or do you see it? Hmm. Oh, I think it's going to be fairly close. Let's see. I put a light angle here. Oh, it is, it is very close. But looking at the light angle from this corner, it is, it's right there. It's around the corner. So lucky, don't have to put that in. But if it was there, we could quickly do the whole box. You could see how the shadow plays out. 
shadow would be like this. If you could see through the box, like if the box was I don't, glass and you just saw the shadows of the, these edges of the glass and you could see through the glass, you would have a shadow that looked like that. Sometimes it's hard to know what shadows, what lines are gonna, you're going to see on the ground as a shadow and what lines you don't see. And that takes just a little bit of practice. And sometimes you do have to just figure it out. You just plot them anyway, just to see. Then you'll find out that, you know, you're not going to see them. They're going to be like inside the box, like, like the shadow of this line is going to be inside the box. And the shadow of this flagpole, this vertical line, that's going to be inside the box. And um, with a little practice, it's kind of easy to see. And sometimes you don't even need practice to like see. This one I had really had to figure out because I wasn't sure, like looking at the light angle of this one and looking at where that corner was. And I was like, oh, it's going to be very close. Maybe you see a little bit of it. If the ang light angle was like um, 60 degrees, then I, I would know that it would be like much steeper and you would never see that corner. Okay, so that's a two-point perspective box. Let's do this one-point perspective box. And this is why this is probably, um, I don't know, maybe not the best choice to do shadows for objects, especially things in one-point perspective. Because if they're parallel light, then the ground line, let's say here's a flagpole. This one's a flagpole too. The shadow of this flagpole is right along that line. And the shadow of this pole, I call them flagpoles vertical lines, just habit, calling them flagpoles. So here is the shadow of this flagpole just goes straight this way. And then the light angle, 30. So this is, this is the shadow. This ground line is the shadow of that vertical line. And then we have this horizontal line that goes back to this, the center vision. This is center vision. So the shadow of that is going to go to the same vanishing point. And then we have this flagpole that's back here. That is going to be a ground line. And that's it. That is the shadow for this box. It's just going to be a rectangle shape. You're just seeing this, the shadow of that. That's all. So this is why this might not be the best of choice. I kind of like the way this one looks, but this is not kind of awkward because we have this tangent line and, and here we go getting into aesthetics anyway, but this is not good to make the shadow just parallel like tangent with that line. It would be, uh, look much better if like with positive light, the sun in front of the viewer, then this is going to come out and it's going to like come out like towards the viewer. That'll be kind of nice, nicer than, than this where it's parallel, like tangent. Or if the sun's a negative light where it's behind the viewer, then, you know, to be like going behind like that. So we just get rid of these tangent lines. But one thing that is kind of interesting with this, and we mentioned this with the vertical lines, that this, the ray of light you see right here, this ray of light, it is going parallel to this surface. I just read, did a random light ray. So this ray of light is touching this surface all the way down, like here. It's just skimming across that surface. So this is going to be in light, the top surface. And then this one is going to be in shadow. And this is this weird um, era, area of uh, like right in between. It's neither, neither of those. It's not in light because the light ray is not hitting it at all, and it, but it's not really in shadow either. It's like skimming across this surface. If there's any texture at all on this box, it would really pop out. Like even a you know, piece of tape that was onto the surface, the ray of light would hit right that, that piece of that edge of the tape, and it would really pop out. So. It's interesting that something could be not in light or not in shadow, neither, like right that in-between state. 
Okay, so there is that. So we got to go on from here and we'll do some inclines, shadow of inclines, because these are all parallel or perpendicular to the ground plane. So we need to talk about things that are an, at an angle to the ground plane.